Teal Farm is a 1,300 acre farm and wilderness preserve that will integrate a multiple level renewable energy system into a perpetual agricultural system, a permaculture design agriculture system, and building design saying, look, we as a civilization have to redesign everything. My own awareness of the problems and the issues that are, ch are challenging us are, um, they're overwhelming for one thing, because they're systemic, because we're talking about global changes in our global ecosystem. We're not going to have viable choices that we can implement on a daily basis until we change our system of manufacturing, transportation, energy production, food production. These are monumental tasks and the, I think the charge right now is to start. We are in a transition and we are a culture of transition right now. We don't really expect that these monumental changes that Melissa just spoke about are going to happen immediately, perhaps not even until the end of the century, but they have to be begun and then if we reflect on them as being in transition, trying to reach a more ideal place, then I'm comforted that we're on the right track. We also need models and examples to show us that something that we have not yet envisioned but desperately crave and want and need is possible. The renewable energy system at Teal Farm will go in in phases. Currently, we have a photovoltaic array, a 15 kilowatt photovoltaic array, which will create a third of the power. We also have gasification, wood gasification boilers. And then we also have the implementation, the plumbing, the infrastructure, to accept phases two and phases three. Now those phases will include a six kilowatt wind turbine on a tower that is presently collecting meteorological data, as well as a microhydro facility, probably between a six kilowatt and a nine kilowatt turbine, that will come out of a pond that we constructed, the water of which will flow downhill about 250 feet, hit these turbines on site, and create even more power. If we think about how our energy system is structured right now, it's very centralized. You know, we get our energy from hundreds of miles to the north in Hydro-Quebec and several hundred miles for several Vermont, or many Vermonters from the south in Yankee Nuclear. But what we're proposing with this barn and with this experiment is that we begin to decentralize energy production. We think about local distribution of that energy to local consumers. Tell me about this concept you have of this, this new energy and the new barn idea. First of all, Vermont's known for its barns, isn't it? And those barns um, typically housed hay and animals, dairy cows and horses, um, and the hay fed them were the, was the energy, you know, the energy that was created by the sun through photosynthesis in the, in the warm season. This barn is a barn in a similar sense, but in a, in a different sense of energy production. Um, rather than housing horses and cows and hay, it houses all the components of a very integrated renewable energy system. We've created the situation. No one else has put it in our lap. We've got these issues, we have to face it. But on the other side of that is knowing that we can be the engineers of something truly great. So Amy, what is this, like the jacuzzi room? What are we looking at here? No, it looks like it. You know, we're standing by uh, the farm's hot water tanks, storage tanks, and they need to be super insulated as you can see so that when the sun shines in the winter time we can take full advantage of the hot water and the temperature that's raised and then store it for a long period of time. So the whole southern wall is going to become an array of solar hot water heater capturing all that heat. Exactly. That water then goes here. That's right. Exactly. And then goes through the whole radiant floor system. You got it. That water also is used, or the, the glycol in that system is used to heat the domestic hot water used in the farmhouse. Now you mentioned also you have like a wood gasifying oven, is that correct? That's right. Should we go see it? That'd be awesome. Let's go. These are virtually um, smokeless. Uh, uh, wood gasification boilers. They're, they're, they're burning wood, but the combustion is in, almost entirely complete, so they're smokeless. This is merely a backup to your principal source of heat, which is the radiant hot water heated by the sun. Exactly. We have multiple backups, and all of that backup and redundancy is also renewable. Now, do my eyes deceive me, or is the backup to this Good old fashioned oil. Is that these are oil tanks? I mean, it looks like an oil tank or right? a diesel That's tank, what I have but at home. they're actually filled with biodiesel. Um, and interestingly, it's a waste based oil. There's a company that delivers for heating purposes 
used vegetable oils from the restaurants. That's correct. Yeah, I mean, they make it biodiesel from that feedstock. Something tells me they're going to be on our show pretty soon. Oh, they're great. It's called Green Technologies in Winooski. Wow. That's right. You know, ultimately, Claude, what we're trying to get at is a very important um, situation in the world, which is global climate change, right? And that global climate change is being directed by the consumption and combustion of fossil fuels. And so the more we can show that energy and really the luxury that energy provides, which is cool spaces and heated spaces and mobility can be gained through current solar energy versus fossil fuels. You know, we have to change this around because, as you know, carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere are getting so high that we're starting to see um, tremendous fallout from that, whether it be storm activity or, or um, you know, heat waves in Europe. There's all kinds of difficulty by changing the atmosphere of the planet. So we must start now rethinking the very energy systems that we rely on and take a great deal of, of pleasure from.